church and our online family and friends. Thank you once again for joining in with us and we thank God for you. 57 years ago on this day, Rosie Davis gave birth to an exciting, healthy baby boy named Matthew Alexander Davis. Yes, Pastor Davis turned 57 years old on today and we are excited that God has allowed him to continue to tell men, women, boys, and girls about the goodness of Christ. Now let's turn our attention to Psalm 67. May God be merciful and bless us. May his face smile with favor on us. May your ways be known throughout the earth, your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations praise you, O God, Yes, may all the nations praise you. Let the whole world sing for joy because you govern the nations with justice and guide the people of the whole world. May the nations praise you, O oh God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then the earth will yield its harvest and God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us and the people all over the world will fear him. That was Psalm 67. Please help us sing, God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has been good to me. He has truly smiled upon us, and we thank him for another day. Amen? We thank God for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God in heaven, it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we come. We thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. We thank you, Father God, for being good and being God. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us to come to study your word. We pray, Father God, that you bless your word, that your word will go forward, that people will hear your word and be changed. Bless us on tonight, Father God, that your word will be delivered clearly, will be accurate, and, Father God, your word will be relevant for even times like these. We ask you to bless us now. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Good to see everybody out again tonight. Good to see you here. We're glad that you have joined us one more again from our remote, our remote location here at the New Beginning Church. Thank you so much for joining us. We're glad that you can make it again on a Wednesday night. Amen. We're in Philippians chapter 2. And tonight, look like we will have an opportunity to complete Philippians chapter 2. And you could be studying Philippians chapter 3. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 2. We'll begin at verse 25 and end up at verse number 30. Amen. Verse number 25. And we'll stop at verse number 30. And that will conclude uh, chapter 2 of Philippians. It's been a joyful walk as we've been walking through Philippians. And you know as well as I know that God has blessed us through this book of Philippians. Amen? Amen. He has tremendously blessed us. And now we come to the end of chapter 2. On last week, we talked about Paul and Timothy and how Paul sent Timothy to the church at Philippi. So the church at Philippi would be uh, blessed by Timothy's presence. On tonight, we talk about a different fella that's committed to the Lord, committed to the ministry, that he is also considering sending to the church at Philippi. His name is Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus is the one that Paul is getting ready to send in chapter 2, at the end of chapter 2, getting ready to send him back to uh, the Philippian church. Now, the thing about Epaphroditus is Epaphroditus is out of the Philippian church. He was a part of the Philippian church, and he was, he was commissioned. He, was, he became a missionary to go and be in partnership with Paul, both physically and spiritually in the ministry. He not only ministered with Paul, but he also ministered to Paul. And we will find those things out as we go through these final verses of chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, we begin at verse number 25. He says, yet I considered it necessary. He says yet, so that means that he's talking and referring back to previous verses where he says that I'm going to send Timothy because there is none like Timothy. There is not one like Timothy whose heart is turned toward God, who is who loves the Lord, who loves the ministry of God. He has a proven character. Said to you last week that your character ought to be proven to the church and proven to God and proven to the people that sits around you. Let me just share with you. Your character ought to be proven even to your co-workers. Those of you who are at home, sheltering in and working from home, or supposed to be working from home, let me just share with you. Your supervisor ought to know without a shadow of a doubt that you are really, really, really working while you're at home. Your character ought to be character that is proven. Your supervisor should not have to worry about whether you are doing all that you're supposed to do as you are working, and I stress, working from home. Paul says, I'm going to send Timothy to you. His character is proven. And then he goes on to say, not, not only am I sending Timothy, who has a proven character, but I'm looking forward to getting out of here also. Paul is locked up in prison. He says that I'm looking forward to getting out of this prison, and I'm looking forward to joining you also. Now, let me just share with you. Paul is thinking about other people while he's in prison. Usually when you're locked up, locked out, and locked down, you don't think about other people when you're in prison. You don't have time to think about other people. You got time to think about how I'm going to get out of here. How, how am I going to leave this place? Just the other day, Deshaun Watson sent out a tweet, and he wanted to know, man, how am I going to get out of this place alive? Some of you know the song better than I do. But we oftentimes consider ourselves rather than considering others. But the Apostle Paul is considering other people, and he's trying to figure out how is he going to get out so he can be a part of the ministry once again in person to these people here at the Philippian church. He says, yet I consider it necessary to send you Epaphroditus. He says he con he's considering Sending you back, Epaphroditus. You see, Epaphroditus, uh, he came to be with Paul. The church, he left the church as a missionary to be with Paul, to minister with Paul, and to minister to Paul. Let's look, let's look further. Verse number 25, Philippians chapter 2. He says it like this. He says, I want to send you Epaphroditus. And then he gives all of these complimentary words 
of who Epaphroditus is. He says, my brother. Paul says, he's my brother. In other words, we both are born again. We are both saved. We are brothers in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are brothers. Let me tell you, when a person recognizes you as a brother, that says a lot about you and says a lot about how you've been living, says a lot about your character. He says, I'm going to send you my brother. Then he calls him not only a brother, but a fellow worker, a fellow worker in the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, a fellow worker. When he's talking about a fellow worker, he's saying, in this gospel of Jesus Christ, when we minister, we minister on the same level. Oh, if we could get a hold of that. Paul says, I'm sending you my brother. We're saved by Jesus Christ. We're on the same level because we're saved. Then he says, I'm sending you my fellow worker, my fellow worker in Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm sending to you a fellow worker that has honorably fought alone beside me. My fellow worker, he has, he, has, he has been a part of this gospel ministry right along with me. See, Paul says something to us right here. He says, don't you take all the credit for what God is using you to do or what God is using you to do along with somebody else. He, said, he, he says that Epaphroditus was a fellow worker. He's a fellow worker, a co-laborer with me in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then he calls him a fellow soldier. You see, ministry in Paul's day was not an easy thing. And many times when Paul had to, had to fight in ministry, Epaphroditus was right there with him. You see, ministry is a, is a war. Ministry gives you an atmosphere and you are thrust right into a war zone. There's a war going on in ministry. <laughs> there's a war going on. Paul says in Ephesians uh, chapter 6 that there's a war, there's a struggle, there's a fight. There's a fight within us in ministry. And there's a fight outside of us in ministry. You see, the war going on within ourselves, in Romans chapter 7, he says, the war that's going on within us is bringing us into captivity of the law of sin. He says, not only is there a war going on within us, but there's a war going, out, going on outside of us, which is Ephesians chapter 6. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against uh, physical things, but we wrestle against spirits. Against spirits and principalities in high places. Paul says Epaphroditus was a fellow soldier. A soldier, a soldier is one who, who fights in the war along with you. He was an honorable fighter alongside me. Let me tell you, sometimes you can go to war, and the same friends that said they would be there with you, they'll run off and leave you. But when you're in war, you need somebody that will be willing to stand with you and stand by you and fight along beside you. Peter was like that. Peter said, said Jesus, I do whatever you want me to do. I go wherever you want me to go. I, I'm right here with you. Jesus said, wait a minute now. Are you not the one? That will deny me three times before in the morning, before the rooster crow. Are you going to deny me before? You see, Paul is saying Epaphroditus fought with me. So what he's doing is he's giving credentials. He's giving compliments. He, he is instructing this church that you suck the right two guys. He says, first of all, Timothy, you know his character. He, he has worked with me as a son in ministry. He worked beside me just like a son works beside his father. He says, whatever you do, know that I'm going to send Timothy because he got a proven track record. And now he said he's, he's going to send Epaphroditus, a fellow yokeman in the word of God, in the gospel of Jesus Christ, a fellow yokeman in the fight for Jesus Christ. And then he says, but he's your messenger. 
Not, not only is he, is he something to me, not only is he special to me, but he's also special to you. This word messenger, it comes from the same word we get the word apostle. And Paul was an apostle unto God, and he said that he was an apostle out of due season. Which suggests to us, which says to us, which is adamant to us right now that there are no modern day apostles. He is an apostle out of due season. Now, let me just share with you. Paul was an apostle out of due season, meaning that Paul was the last apostle to be called. He says that I am an apostle out of due season who served in the office of the apostles. This word messenger here is the same word we get the word apostle in the original Greek. However, Paul in Epaphroditus was not on the same level when it comes to apostleship. Epaphroditus was not an apostle. Even though the Greek word messenger here, it, it comes from the same Greek word we get the word apostle. What he's saying is, in the office of apostleship, Paul held the office, and Epaphroditus came along beside him and did the work along with him. God blesses us when we work along beside those who are called to position. I'm so glad that God has sent me some men and some women who are messengers for the sake of the kingdom. I'm so glad that God has, has blessed me to, to be surrounded with men and women who do not need a title. Men and women who, who, who do not need to be pat on the back. Men and women who will do what God has called them to do and what the Spirit is unctioning them to do, even though they don't have a title. That's why at the New Beginning Church, we stripped all titles. We dismissed all titles. Everybody's a servant. We say we want to hear God say <laughs> thank you, we want God to say, uh, you good and faithful servant, come on into uh, to the premise of God. We want to hear God say it, but we want to do it with the title. Paul had the title. Epaphroditus worked the work. Let me tell you, if you don't have a title, please work the work. Amen. Even, if, even if you don't get a pat on the back, just keep working the work. One brother said, you know, Pastor Davis is not the type to tell you that you did a good job every time you do a good job. Well, the question is, are you working for pats on the back? Or are you working for the Lord? You see, if you work for pats on the back from Pastor Davis, the only thing you can get is a pat on the back for pa Pastor Davis, and that's not good for anything. But if you're working for the Lord... The Lord will give you a just reward that I cannot give you. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen right about that. Amen. We work for the Lord. We work as unto the Lord. We serve as unto the Lord. He says that he is your messenger and the one who ministered to my knees. Uh-uh. Paul says even the preacher, even the apostle, even the man of God had needs, and Epaphroditus ministered to my needs. Thank God, thank God, thank God when we're going through the fight. Thank God when we're doing things that, that God would have us to do. Thank God that there is somebody that will minister to the preacher. Amen. Somebody that will minister to the man of God. Somebody that will administer to the needs, whether it's a physical need, a spiritual need, regardless of the need, somebody is looking to minister. You ought to be looking. You ought to be searching. You ought to be looking for an opportunity to minister to the man of God and to minister to those who are in service of God. See, some people want everybody to see that them. Some people want everybody to, to serve them. Some people want everybody to, to walk with them. Some people want everybody to help them in their work, but they don't want to help anybody in the work that that person is doing. Paul says Epaphroditus is, is such a kind of guy that he, he ministered to my need. 
verse, verse number 26, he says, since he was longing for you all, it was distressed because you had heard that he was sick. Now here it is, Epaphroditus that came out of the Philippian church. He went on a missionary journey to be with Paul, to minister with Paul, and to minister to Paul. And while he was on this missionary journey with Paul, he got sick. And he didn't just get a headache. He didn't just get a stomach ache. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't just have a fever. He got sick. And you're going to find out he was sick near death. But Paul commends him and says, Epaphroditus worked with me strongly in ministry, and he was distressed. He was, he was nervous. He was upset because he thought you all had found out how sick he was. Look at, look at what the text says. He was distressed because you had heard that he was sick. He was upset. He was in distress. He was stressed out because he didn't want the church back home to worry about him. He was sick. Then verse 27 says, for indeed, for indeed, he was sick almost unto death. When I say Pastor Dinus was sick, he was, he was, he had a terminal illness. When I say he was sick, they did not expect him to recover. recover. When I say Pastor Dinus was sick, he was sick, Paul says, almost to death. But he says in previous verses, he kept right on working. God, God want us to work to our last breath. Why, why should we work to our last breath? Because every breath we breathe, God has given it to us. And we ought to use every single breath that God has given us, we ought to use every single breath to glorify him, to magnify him, to work for him. That's why, that's why in our church, every leader is a servant leader. Every leader is a servant leader. No president, no director, no coordinator, no vice president. Everybody is a leader, and those who lead in ministry are servant leaders. And the suggestion is, matter of fact, the intention is, is that the servant leader ought to lead and serve in such a way that no one else can compete with him or her in service. The servant leader ought to be the leader in service. Ought to be the one that, that walk and have leadership and servitude flowing from his or her veins. Verse 27 says, For indeed he was sick, almost unto death. But there's always a blessing. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Paul says Epaphroditus was important to him. Epaphroditus was sick, but God had mercy on Epaphroditus. Not only did he have mercy on Epaphroditus, God had, a mercy, had mercy on Paul. Because had Epaphroditus died at that time, then Paul would have had sorrow upon sorrow upon sorrow. See, sometimes we think that the preacher, the leader, the man of God never gets sick. He never has sorrow. He never has a complaint. And sometimes I believe that we as leaders paint the picture that we are twisted steel that we're made of iron, and it mislead people to think that we can do it all by ourselves, and we never need help, and we never need anybody's support. But let me just share with you, Paul says Epaphroditus was there for him, and he says God healed him, and not only God's healing upon Epaphroditus was a good thing for Epaphroditus, it was also good for Paul. Because Paul says, he says, because God healed him, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Mm -hmm. Ooh, let's listen to this question. My question to you is, if you're no longer around, will your pastor 
have sorrow upon sorrow. If you are no longer present, will the congregation of God hate that you're gone? If you can no longer serve in the capacity that you're serving in, will you even be missed? You can answer that question. If you, if you just didn't exist anymore, would people really be sad other than for one day? You know, we all are sad for one day. You know, we, we, we lost a, a very good friend, a very good um, choir member, a very good leader, very good vocalist. And Aaron Patterson, Aaron, Aaron Barry, Barry Patterson, we, we lost him. And let me tell you, I could have told God you could have taken somebody else other than that one. I could have given God a list of people that he could have taken rather than this one. But it's not my choice. <laughs> my question to you is, if you are no longer present, will the church be better for it or worse for it? Paul says, God blessed Epaphroditus to come on back to help. And he also blessed me because if he hadn't blessed Epaphroditus, then I would have had sorrow upon sorrow upon sorrow. I thank God. I thank God at the New Beginning Church that we can't afford anybody to go missing. We can't afford anybody to miss. Every church is as strong as its weakest link. So we have to build each other up. We have to strengthen each other. We have to understand that we are valuable to the kingdom, the kingdom of God. Verse 28 says, Therefore I sent him eagerly, eagerly, that when you see him again, you may rejoice. Paul says he, he's sending Epaphroditus. And when you see him again, he's not going to look sick. You're going to rejoice. You're going to be glad to see him. Amen. Oh, my question to you today, my dear. Is your church glad to see you? Are the church members glad to see you? My question to you is, if you're not there, are you on a mission? Or are you just missing? You see, there's a difference in being missing and being on a mission. Epaphroditus was on a mission. Too many people in church today are just missing. They're, they're just missing. They show up whenever they want to show up. They, they, they come in and they walk in and think everybody ought to be glad to see them. Let me tell you, we've got used to you missing now. And when people get used to you missing, they understand really well that you are not on a mission. Thank God for folk at the New Beginning Church that are on a mission. When you're on a mission, when you're on a mission, you're doing God's will. When you call to do some things, you do what you're called to do. And no one has to pump and prime you to do it. No one has to beg you to do it. My dears, get on a mission for the Lord. No, it's not about you. It's not about what you feel. It's not about what you think. It's not about how you're going to look. If you're on a mission for the Lord, then you ought to work for the Lord. Amen. You ought not be missing. You, too many people in the local church have forgotten that we are in a great military battle. And in this militia that we are in, we have to support each other. We have to do what Epaphroditus did for Paul. We have to fight along beside him and be glad to fight along beside him. And even though we're in a militia, even though we're in an army, we're in the Marines, we're in the Air Force, we're in the Coast Guard, we're in the National Guard, some folk just come up AWOL. Absent that, uh, without official leave. They, they go AWOL. They, and you, you know, as the pastor, many times pastors can tell when it's time for that person to go AWOL. 
The other day, I looked the woman in the face and said, how long are you going to be here this time? Because people go AWOL, they go missing, and they're not on a mission. Yes, Epaphroditus was on a mission. And that's why Paul could say great things about him. Paul could say things about him that he couldn't say about other people because he was on a mission. He was on a mission for the Lord. He was on a mission for the church. He was on a mission for the man of God. And he was building up his rewards in heaven. It's time for us to stop playing church. It's time for us to be about the Lord's business. It's time for us to be busy in the Lord's work. Let me tell you, regardless of who you are, your time may, may not be as long as you think it is. If you, was, if you were to be told that in two days you'll be out of here, what would you change? What would you do different? Well, whatever you would change if you knew you were going to leave in two days, that's what you ought to be doing right now. You ought to be about a mission. Paul says, I'm going to send him to you because I know you're eager to see him. You will see him, and, and I'm going to send him eagerly unto you. And when you see him again, you're going to rejoice about it. My question to, tonight, my dears, is when the church see you coming, do they rejoice? Have they been missing you? Or have they gotten to a point where they understand what you do regularly? Because folk who miss church all the time, who miss Miss working for the Lord all the time, they, they create a pattern after a while. Every three months, then the three months uh, increase to six months that they're missing. I'm saying to you today, be like Epaphroditus. Be on a mission. Don't miss so the church can rejoice in seeing you. And I may be less sorrowful. Paul saying that that uh, Epaphroditus was sick and he, he rejoicing because the Lord healed him. But he also looked forward to sending Epaphroditus to the church he came out of so they can rejoice and Paul would no longer be sorrowful. Let me tell you, he didn't want to be sorrowful because, because when you got a co-laborer in ministry, you want him to be healthy. You want to be glad about his health. Doing this COVID-19 situation that we're in today, we're looking forward to keeping each other healthy. That's why we're broadcasting at the remote location today, because the main campus is not open today. Pastor Anthony McClendon threw that in my spirit today. We're, we're, we're operating from a remote location because the main campus is not able to be open today. And now that we're, re we're operating from a remote location, we're still concerned about everybody that would be there that they are healthy. When you, when you look at ministry, we are, we are concerned about people in their health in ministry. We're concerned that they not only prosper in spirit, but prosper in their physical body. Not only prosper in their physical body, prosper in their emotional body. We want them to prosper, even as their souls prosper. Verse 29, he says, Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such men in high esteem. Paul says, I'm going to send Epaphroditus to you. He's well now. And when I send him to you, let me let you, let me remind you, he's been a great soldier for the Lord. And when you get back, he, you're going to rejoice over him, and I'm rejoicing too because my sorrow has been cut. And then he says, not only are you going to rejoice, you're going to rejoice over him in such a way that you need to receive him in the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive him. Paul is saying if there's anybody in the congregation that has doubt about whether or not they should receive Epaphroditus, let me just tell you now, receive him. Receive him, therefore, in the Lord with all gladness. Be excited about receiving. Be glad that he's back. The Bible, the Bible teaches that when one soul comes to Christ, we, we, we should stop and throw a party for him. We should stop and be excited about it. 
Such as it is also, Paul is saying, when a missionary come back home off the missionary field, we ought to throw a party for him. We ought to rejoice about it. When a missionary is healed that's been doing the work of the ministry and God has taken care of them, we ought to rejoice about it. We ought to be excited about it. Paul declares that you're gonna, you, ought to re, you ought to treat him with great sense of esteem. And not only does he, he address Epaphroditus, he also says even the other men, that, that whole, whole other men in great high esteem, those who, who, been, who fit these descriptions, that is. Let me say to you, men, women, boys, and girls, if you're going to be held in high esteem, then you ought to be consistent. You ought to be consistently working for the Lord. You ought to have your eye on the prize of Jesus Christ. Regardless of who says what to you or who says what about you or regardless if anybody pats you on your back, you ought to keep working for the Lord. Then men will hold you in high self-esteem, in higher esteem. The problem is our self-esteem is damaged. Our self-esteem is damaged when people don't hold us in higher esteem. But when you have a healthy self-esteem, you don't care if people rejoice with you. You don't care if people say, yeah, you did a good job or not. You don't care if people pay you for the work that you do or not. You're going to keep on doing the work. Amen. The work of the ministry. Paul says, hold these men, hold men like this in, in higher esteem. Hold, lift up these men in higher esteem. It, it bothers me when I see a, a brother lift himself. It bothers me when I see a brother who always want to tell somebody else how they ought to appreciate him. It bothers me when I see a sister that always uh, wants somebody to say something good about them. Like a man that's on the world stage right now. He wants the news media to, to compliment him. He, he wants somebody, man, when you got high self-esteem, you don't care if people compliment you. When you have you have low self-esteem, then everything gotta be about you. You gotta show a video of, to make you look good. You gotta have one person after the other get up and talk about how great you've done things and what good things you've done. Let me tell you, men will see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. That ought to be your focus. Amen. Your focus ought to be that God will be glorified, Jesus will be lifted up, and the body of Christ will be edified, be built up. And if you focus always on you, then God won't be glorified. Jesus won't be lifted. And the church won't be built up and edified. You have to focus on God in order for God to be glorified. God delivered me from men who, who say that they have a gift, who say that God has called them, who say that God has given them a talent, but they can only do it if the conditions are right for them. <laughs> we want to focus on glorifying God. We want to focus on God getting the glory for everything that we do. You see, if we give, the God, give God the glory down here, he will elevate us down here. If we give God the glory down here, he will tremendously bless us and have we, when we get glorified bodies. The focus ought to be on God. The focus ought to be on building up God, making God big. This word magnify, making God big so everybody else can see how big our God is. Amen. Let me tell you right now, there are more people asking for prayer and more people uh, unctioning us to pray now than ever before. Once the coronavirus is over. I want to hear all those people still praying. I want to see if God has really made a difference in the world we live in. 
I'm not talking about praying, Lord, lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wait, I pray the Lord, my soul to take. I'm talking about calling and supplicating before God and asking God to bless this nation and this world. We need God to bless this nation. We need God to bless this world. Verse number 30. He says, lift up these men. Build them up, hold them up, and esteem these men. Because for the work of Christ, he came to close, came close to death. For the work of Christ, he came close to death. Not regarding his life to supply what to supply what was lacking in your service toward me. What he says, he says, he says, lift him up, esteem him well. Paul says Epaphroditus, he was in the ministry of Jesus Christ. He was, he was doing the work of the ministry. He was doing the work of Christ. He came close to death while doing the work of Christ. Are you willing to come close to death? Are you willing to die for the sake of Christ? The one that died for you? <laughs> he says, Epaphroditus came close to death. He came close to death and he was not considering or regarding his own life. He came close to death working for the Lord and, and working with me in, in this battle, working with me in ministry. He came close to death and he didn't even regard his own life. He came close to death. He knew he was coming close to death, but he did not consider his own life. He says, esteem this man. He says, not only did he come close to death and didn't regard his own life, to supply what was lacking in your service toward me. The church at, at, at Philippi was a blessing to Paul. We found that out in, in chapter 1. The church at Philippi was a major blessing to Paul spiritually and physically. Physically and financially. Uh, financially, they gave to the man of God. They supported him spiritually. They prayed for him. They worked with him in ministry spiritually. They supported him physically. They gave him food to eat. They supported him financially. They gave him money. We're going to find out later on that, that Paul says, now if you choose not to, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He says, because of the work for Christ, he came close to death, not regarding his own life, to supply what you were lacking. Even though you were supplying things to me, there were some things that were lacking. And Epaphroditus made up for it. Epaphroditus made up for it. I used to wonder, back home I used to wonder, why do they always feed the preacher and give the preacher money? Because what the church couldn't do, individuals were making up for it. My, my, my. What the church couldn't afford to do, individuals made up for it. So that, that was the role of Epaphroditus and he chose that role. He chose to minister to Paul. He, he chose to fight in the war with Paul, this spiritual warfare that's all around us. He chose to go to battle and minister in the midst of the trenches with Paul. And not only that, even when he got sick, he kept ministering. Boy, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't take much for some of us to sit down. It doesn't take much. It doesn't, our car can quit one time. We threw with that church thing. Because when you miss once, it's easy to miss two, three, four, and five times. But thank God for those who will walk the rest of the way. Thank God for those who will, who will come when, when they, they don't feel too well. Thank God for those who will, who will not consider themselves more than they consider the ministry of God. Paul says Epaphroditus was sick near death. He, he was about to die. The doctor had given him up, but he kept working. 
Paul says when he comes back to you, you're going to rejoice over him, and I'm going to be rejoicing too because if I had lost him, I would have had great sorrow. He says, but you receive him in the Lord with great gladness and elevate and esteem him. Not only because he's a man, not only because he's a man of God, not, not only because he's been a missionary for you, but esteem him because he worked out his ministry. He worked out his salvation even though he was near death. Thank God for the saints that will work even when they're sick. Thank God for the saints that will minister even though the, the doctor has given them a bad report. Thank God for the saints that will, will keep working regardless of what goes on around them. They just keep right on working. Thank God for the saints. And the reason why we ought to work is because Jesus died for us. This is the right season to talk about it. And we ought not wait to this season to talk about it. We ought to keep working because over 2,000 years ago, Jesus worked it out for us. Right. He worked it out. We weren't fit to live. We, we weren't able to die for ourselves. But Jesus gave up his life. He sacrificed. He was committed. Epaphroditus was committed to the cause. Jesus was committed to the cause. He died for us. Even though he could have come down, he, he died for us. On a hill called Calvary. He was committed to the end. He gave his life for you and for me. He died over 2,000 years ago. Jesus the Christ died on a skull hill called Calvary. They laid Jesus in a bar tomb. He was committed to the cause. And the cause was to redeem all mankind. Jesus Christ, who never knew sin, became sin for you and me. If you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is a good moment. This is your time. You can receive him right now. This is a good season to know that Jesus died, he was buried, he rose, and he was seen. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended to you. You can be saved right here, right now, where you are. All you have to do is trust Jesus as your personal Savior. The door of the church is open. You can just trust him just like you are. Not, not, no, nah, I don't want to hear what you've done because you don't know what I've done. But what I do know is what Jesus has done over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary. He died for you and me. And if you've never received him, I want you to join me by bowing your head right now and inviting him into your life. Jesus want to be your savior. Jesus wants to be a part of your life. You can be saved right here, right now. Just join me in praying right now. Bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for, your sin, for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. Make me a new person. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. We believe that you are born again if you prayed that prayer honestly and invited Jesus Christ into your life. We believe that you're born again and you're on your way to heaven. We believe that you have a brand new life in Jesus Christ. Please inbox me and let me know that you received Jesus as your personal Savior on this broadcast so I can rejoice with you. And for those of you who are in between a church home or don't have a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and he's the main attraction. Just inbox me and let me know that you want to be a member and you can become a member even on live broadcast. And those of you who struggle with sin like we all do, and you think you've gone too far for God to reach you, I want to say to you, God is waiting on you to commit to him. He's waiting on you to let him change you. He's waiting on you to make a difference in your life. Just trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. 
and join a good Bible teaching church. The one that I recommend is New Beginning Church. We're at 4251 Shield My Road, Houston, Texas. Please join us, and we'll be glad to have you. And if you want to commit to this ministry, we are having our live broadcast for Sunday school, as well as Bible study and Sunday worship service. You can be a part of that, and you can give to our ministry on Cash App, or you can mail your checks in to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Make your checks payable to the New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or give by way of Cash App. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Soul. Give by way of our cash app. So whatever you do, just know that we have Sunday school at 9 a.m. every Sunday on Facebook Live and on Zoom Live. And we have worship service on our live broadcast at 1045 a.m our worship service, 10.45 a.m. on Sunday. And then on Wednesday, which is a part of this service that you've just joined us with, Wednesday at 7.20 p.m., join us every Wednesday, 7.20 p.m., Facebook Live and also on Zoom. We'll be glad to have you a part of our church. And now, since we've been out, our children have still been meeting by way of online called Kahoot. Kahoot. Our children are still doing their Sunday school lessons by way of Kahoot. So parents, uh, get your children involved with Kahoots and so they can be a part of the Sunday school lesson. God has created an avenue by which we can do great things in ministry and keep our lives moving. Keep us in tune with each other and in tune with the ministry. So Facebook Live and Zoom. 9 a.m. for Sunday school on Sundays, 9.45 a.m. for our worship service on Sundays, and 10.45 a.m. Uh, 10.45 a.m. for our worship service on Sunday, and 7.20 p.m. is our Bible study time. Again, thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. Thank you for being a part of this service. Thank you for, for being here with us tonight. Please feel free to join us as we come every single week and every single Sunday to lift up the name of Jesus. We're glad you have come. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another honor. Now, Lord, we pray that you bless us. Bless us, Father God, that we will be like Epaphroditus and like Timothy, that we will commit our lives to serving you, serving the church, and serving the man of God. Bless our lives, Father God, that our lives will be blessed by you in such a way that we will tell men, women, boys, and girls about the God we serve. Bless us to live our lives in such a way, Lord, that others will see our works and glorify you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Thank you so much for being a part of our service.